you were there, Jim Henson was there, and we, uh, what was happening? There was, uh, I don't know if it was the fumes from the funny cigarettes that was being smoked by you, that poor people. <laughs> or it was the several glasses of wine we had at the banquet. But when we were back in the limousine, Jim looked at us and said, should we do another one? <laughs> <laughs> and, and we said, yes, why, why not? Why not? And you weren't even trust in blindfold. <laughs> <laughs> so he, um, he said, you know, I said, well, what, what have we got in mind? And he said, well, his, his daughter Lisa was majoring in mythology and we've just been studying Indian, uh, well, yeah, West, uh, Western Indian. Eastern Indian. Eastern Indian. Yeah. Indian. Uh, Indian. Mythology. And he said, there seems to be lots of like things that fly through the air. It's quite colorful and dramatic. And I said, oh, that's fine. And he said, do you know anything about it? I said, no, I don't know a thing. Mm -hmm. No, okay. <laughs> so I said, uh, then I came to him and I said, well, no, what about Goblins. And he said, oh yes, that's, that's good. So, <laughs> goblins. And he said, you know, what I want to do this time is, is introduce um, some human beings into it. Um, and um, I immediately saw, I had this vision of a baby surrounded by goblins. And um, he said, well, what would be the story? And I thought of a labyrinth. And I said, the labyrinth is a good, not I thought it was a physical place, but it was also a good metaphor for many things. And that's how we left it. Um, came back to England and I painted a picture almost immediately of a baby surrounded by goblins, um, and the, which was the beginning of the film. But when, um, when we were, we always wanted a one year old baby, we thought, um, in, in the film. And when, <laughs> when we come to film, uh, as if by magic, we <laughs> <laughs> happened to have one spare. <laughs> that, was, that was totally, you know. Um, but the strangest thing was, he looked exactly like uh, the painting painting, of the yeah, baby yeah. that the bride had painted far before Toby was even conceived. Yeah. <laughs> and that painting hung up in Jim's house in London for mm. many years. It's still, uh, it's still, it's still there, there, actually. It's still there. Yeah. Still is. Yeah. 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 Uh, it is, I just saw yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> right, a few months ago, I just saw it. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the secret behind the stripes uh, in it is that um, I, ne I knew I needed to make the baby stand out with all this mayhem and all the brown, wrinkly stuff. I uh, needed the baby to stand out. We also knew that we were, we were going to have to not just have a live baby, but a puppet baby. Or, and so um, I thought, well, something that was quite striking were, would be like the stripes. And I also was thinking of um, Alice in Wonderland and uh, her stripes knocking. And, um, and in those days, you could just buy, which was like those, you could just buy striped little baby grows. And we thought, well, that'd be, that'd be it. But um, we had a wonderful wardrobe mistress, Betty, was her name? Betty? I don't remember her last name. But uh, she was the wardrobe, wardrobe mistress for Superman. Just before, just before us. And uh, she said, well, you've got to have lots of duplicate costumes because of, you know, in those days I think filming was like one pound forty-three a second or something like that. Um, so you had to have, if anything got wrong, um, a replacement immediately. So we thought, fine, we'll just buy lots of baby grows. But we discovered, of course, they did nothing matched up. So it had, the, all the duplicates had to be exactly the same. So we had to track down the fabric and have made up I don't know, 40 or 50 of these things, I think. Oh, no. A lot. We had a lot. <laughs> we could have gone in business afterwards. <laughs> um, but we immediately we discovered um, that um, diapers uh, were, it looked a bit strange, but a normal size diaper. So we sort of invented this slimmed down <laughs> diaper. So Toby could look really elegant. I was wearing cutting edge technology. <laughs> <laughs> But of course, the, well, the first day of uh, shooting, when Toby uh, Bowie picks him up, first thing he does is pee. <laughs> <laughs> the divers didn't work. <laughs> I'm proud of that. David yeah. <laughs> Bowie was very gracious. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right. It's just all downhill from there. <laughs> Uh, and one of the reasons, uh, I know I did say to Jim, though, he, you know, we were a bit, it's quite a concern, because Toby cries his way through the whole 
blooming Phil. So you're going to need to have one shot where he's like happy, which he never got round to. But it was, it, we were, you know, picking pins in him. It was because um, he didn't want to go to bed. I mean, so we put him in the car and he'd just be wailing because it'd be middle of the afternoon and knew it wasn't. And he didn't bedtime. have, he hated having nap time anyway. And he just refused. He thought, why have you put me in here now? And he, it was a great way to get him to cry. <laughs> <laughs> he was just crying, it was frustration. Although it's hard to watch it, it's hard for us to watch it now and see him crying, even though we knew that he was absolutely fine and we were only about two feet away from him, always. There was never a time when he wasn't. Yeah, yeah the only other there. dodgy moments was that uh, when he was on set with, with Bowie is that they um, set off the music very loudly, immediately, and that would start with you. Um, it's for the magic, magic dance. And we kept saying, couldn't you just start it off low, so, you know, and then turn it up the volume, but it didn't quite work out that way. But Toby, I, mean, I think um, you can speak, we can all see the strange effect working on that film as for Toby, because uh, <laughs> he, was, he was so used to the puppets, he would come around as a, as a we would say, major special, he'd yeah. come around and see all the puppets, and he were really used to them, wasn't that? Wish their noses, <laughs> they wouldn't break them, break them. <laughs> <laughs> so it has affected you, because Just you a little bit. <laughs> <You're the puppets. laughs> it's in the blood. Yeah. Do you think anybody should be asked? Yes, yeah, so there's a lot about saying. Are there any questions uh, about what we did, or why we did it, and how we got away with it? Yeah. I have a question. It's sort of a, a dovetail from something you said last night about the Dark Crystal being a story that people are familiar with in, in some ancient way, that it's, it's myths that evolved yeah. and labyrinth to, to some extent to say. With that being said, how do you feel, what do you think about the reason that your designs endure, where these stories have been called retold, but we keep coming back? To, to your design. Ah, oh, well, that's yes. Um, I try. I I look backwards. I mean, I study art. And I look backwards and all my art, but bring it to the present, now and the future. I sort of try and synthesise it. I mean, the Dark Crystal is for, for creatures. All my creatures are amalgams of various things. They they look at my best. They look familiar, and you go, well, wait a minute. I've never seen anything like that. And because they cross between animals and you know, people, and they're all sorts of a mishmash. Um, but I think it's, I think was in, in, in again, in Labyrinth, um, it was the freedom that Jim gave us to develop ideas and develop things. And he gave me the freedom just to paint. So I invented characters that I knew could, that would make good puppets. Um, and so some of my design, so I'm designing in the abstract first. So the sort of abstract shapes and forms that I know are going to work or where you can hide things. And then I make references to other things. So uh, indeed in uh, Labyrinth there's a lot of Alice in Wonderland. <coughs> Although Jim never saw it until we got Terry Jones on board. When Terry Jones came along, um, he, um, instead of just, you're supposed to like tweak the script, he threw it, a lot of it out, really, and just went to my sketchbooks and picked little things out of corners and said, I want to write about this. And that's where the, you know, the door knockers came from and the, the, the wild things, the fireys came from. And a lot of the characters and the worm and everything came from him just finding little things. And he totally understood uh, the Englishness of what I was doing, the, the English references. Um, and uh, I still still believe it's what I have that's special is because it, it's done that way around. I'm still designing, I'm still, I mean, in terms of the books, but it's not understand by the film world. The film world always wants to start with uh, the, you know, whatever, the concept. They know exactly what it is, how it's going to be marketed, and then they try to find somebody to do the, do the designs and the drawings, and I think it's all too late. What you've done is shut it down immediately, and I try to make, do drawings things that, are, that have resonances and open up ideas and story. And I think um, because that we also were still working with puppets here, and it's not CGI, it still is, has a looseness and an openness, openness to it that you can still respond to when you see it on the screen, because it's all quirky and uh, open and 
you know, I mean, they all have integrity. They yeah. really do. And yeah. they're believable. No matter how odd they look, no matter what you're looking at, you still believe that it could be doing what it's doing. I think that's a very important thing. Also, with the puppets, each one operated by human beings would have its own quirks. With CGI, Absolutely. they use the same algorithms. So yes. you look at a oh. bunch of spiders on a movie screen yeah. and you see, uh, and you start chanting, Impotep, Impotep, <laughs> Impotep, <laughs> because you recognize the algorithms yeah. they reused again. And they do that for all sorts yeah. of sequences. Yeah. And it's, 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 when, you, when you're looking at a series of yeah. mistakes, it is, it's always the mistakes yeah. that make it human. Mm -hmm. that, it, it, yes. it is the humanness that when it shines through that gives it life. Um, the other thing is, of course, the puppets do hardly anything at all. <laughs> They're blooming useless, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and, and so the, the trick is to, is to design something that they do really well. And if you use that as the basis of the character, you think you've seen it do much more. Um, I mean, you, you're having, you're designing a the, the thing now, so you, you're hitting that same. Yes, yeah, the, uh, the idea that you really want to strive to get one thing right, and the rest will follow. And then the, everything else is performance. It's, it really is just the hand and the puppet moving the mouth, and that's all you really need. And if you have anything else, it's a bonus. And if you do one other thing, that's great, but it doesn't need it. You know? It really is just that. The two questions, one there and one there. So, I don't know if you'll even agree with the premise of this.